I had a lab on this. Is the critical angle the angle at which <clears throat> it hits and then gets refracted parallel? Yeah. To medium, different medium, different medium boundary. Yeah, that's exactly it. So. The idea is if you and only if you go from a higher index to a lower index. So and let's say that's what we're doing here in this glass. So let's say we got glass surrounded by air. Now let's go to this interface right here. So let's say we've got a photon incident coming out of the glass and the lights in the glass right now. So in this case, as we go from glass to air and you've got an index refraction for the glass, of 1.52 and air again is approximately one. So is this gonna to bend to, toward or away from the normal? Away, so as our index is getting smaller, then our angle has to get bigger. And so in this case, it's gonna go away. That way, theta two here is bigger than theta one, uh, theta one here. So in this case, at some point, you'll theta one will get big enough that your theta two would just run parallel to the surface. And any angle that's bigger than that, is that, you know, that angle or bigger, would have no light actually transmitted to the next medium. This seems kind of weird. Note if, if you were underwater and shined a flashlight, if you shine it at a big enough angle, all the light gets reflected. None of it actually will make it. And so a person standing above the water won't actually see the flashlight beam. Now some of the rays would get scattered, so they might know that there's a light under there somewhere, but they wouldn't actually see the beam of the light if it's at a big enough angle to the surface. So, and we call that point total internal reflection. And so if we look at Snell's law in that light, again, we only have a chance of this happening if this thing bends away from the normal, and that only happens if we're going from a larger to smaller index of refraction. And so in this case, we'd call that angle where that just begins to happen, the critical angle, and that occurs when your theta two here is 90 degrees. And that way it all runs parallel to the surface. None of it actually ends up transmitted to the next medium. And so in this case, what's the sine of 90? Good, this is all one. And so if you look, you get the sine of your critical angle is equal to n two over n one. And then you can take the inverse sine to get the critical angle. So that's where that comes from. That formula is also on the front of your handout. And so in this case, all we really need to know is the two indices of refraction between glass and air here. So we'll take the inverse sine of one over 1.52. If you notice, if we did this backwards and wanted to know if there was a critical angle in going from air to glass, we'd end up with 1.52 over one which would be a ratio bigger than one, can a sine function ever equal a number bigger than one? No, which is why that doesn't work. No physical answer there. But as long as you went from bigger to smaller instead, it works. And what do we get for an angle here? 41.1 degrees, fantastic.